record to the cloud. Okay, now I've got to go click over here, live stream. And it should be kicking in here in a second. Dun, dun, dun. We'll get this going. I'll just wait for it to show up on my screen. And this is done. There's the beep. And I believe we're live now. So let's just get this going here. Waiting for it to show up on my screen. Yes, anyways, I believe we're live time. Okay, where did you go? I clicked on the wrong window. Uh, okay, there we are. Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I work with IT all the time. You think I would have this down pat now, but uh, welcome, Brother Albert, uh, to uh, Prayer for the Nation, Prayer for America, Prayer for the Nations. Um, what a privilege it is to finally meet with you. Um, what I, just to, while we're talking about that, just to remind everybody, I'm trying to sneak off the side here, share this broadcast with people because it's not just you who are listening, but it could be other people. Somebody might be touched. You know, the, what they say the six degrees of separation, you know somebody, you know somebody, and they know you. And somebody needs to hear the word of the word of the Lord here. And so we, we're praying that this uh, becomes a reality to them. Um, we we're just talking before the we started online here, uh, how the living word, the word has set us free. And and yeah. I just asked Brother Albert to just share a little bit of what happened, like the deliverance or, or the testimony is probably the better way of saying it that way, because the reality is, is the word has set us free. So Brother Albert, without further ado, just introduce yourself and feel um, free to share what's on your heart and you have something to share later on, by all means. Sorry, go ahead. Amen. I just wanted to all. my name's Albert Ramirez, uh, just a born again believer. Uh, God uses me in the prophetic ministry. I did not want that ministry, uh, but I... <laughs> I was called into it prophetically through a prophetic word and uh, and God God uses me in that ministry so but pro prophecy and the number one thing about prophecy is it's it is the word of God you know and he, and and God gives us speaks to us through his word by his spirit but especially through his word and God's word is his spirit it's life Jesus said um, the words that I speak to you they are spirit and they are life and they do give life Think about me, if you want to know about a little bit about my testimony, how the word of God has transformed and changed my life was, was I was, I was dealing drugs, doing crazy things, just came back from Vietnam and um, the word of God basically just got a hold of me. Well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll share a little part of that ministry with my, my wife to be, she was my girlfriend, her mother got born again and she was, uh, I was talking to her one time and she said, um, she knew, uh, you know, I guess you could read into me that what I was involved in doing. And she goes, Albert, you need Jesus in your life. And I told her, I says, Irene, I will never receive mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. I'm a Catholic and I'll always be a Catholic. I said, I will never receive Jesus Christ. And guess who I'm saying that to? I'm saying that to Jesus because Jesus is in her. You never tell God you no. can't do it. You're not going to no. do something. He, no. will, he will change your mind quickly. Amen. So anyway, long story short, as I went about drinking, doing drugs and stuff like that at the time, that was 40, almost 44 years ago. And, um, and, and anyway, uh, I was sitting there smoking marijuana and drinking beer, and all of a sudden something came on me. And what was happening, people don't realize, is that even when you're in sin, God's hand is upon you. You know, if somebody's praying for you, God's hand is upon you. And the Lord is watch. The Lord watches over you because God has plans for every person, every person's life, and He's He's watching over you. Somebody's praying for you, whether it's your mother, your aunt, your uncle, your brother, sister. Somebody's praying for you, and God's hand is upon you, even when you're in the most raunchy, sinful life you may be thinking you're living. God's hand is still upon you because somebody's praying for you. That's how important prayer is. That's how effective prayer is because God is still watching over you and then then and you you may get saved right away you may get saved you know 20 30 years from now but still god's hands upon you because somebody's praying for you that's why this why we have this 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 prayer group here the zoom meeting of prayer it's because you know we pray and, and we believe and we know that god hears and answers prayer and that god is doing something well anyway long story short is that when uh, when i was doing those things i was sitting there one day and I was happy, happy in the <laughs> sinful life I was living. Yeah. 
And God, what happened is, is God, God's, when I told my mother-in-law that just about a week before that, you know, God says, oh yeah, tough guy, let me take my hand off of you and let's see how you can prevail against the enemy that comes against yeah. you like a flood in which he did. You know, I just felt guilt. I felt uh, suicidal, I felt depression, all of it. All in them in an instant of time. It felt like something came over me. You know, I, I, wow. I don't describe like a silk, you know, scarf or something was over, and it was a demonic spirit, you know. And, and I was trying to fight it, trying to, trying to uh, get uh, uh, rid of that feeling, you know, and those thoughts because they were in the, the fear <laughs> because I'd never had thoughts like that. And, um, <laughs> excuse me but I, I i was broken finally after about a month trying to do things to get rid of that feeling uh, uh i was just broken a broken and contrite spirit god won't know why it's cat out so that's what the word of god says so i don't know why to this day that i went to my mother-in-law's church because i was a catholic hmm. but i did i went to her church it was a christian church spirit filled and crying knocking on the door asking uh asking for a priest <laughs> and the janitor answers and he says um well this is not a catholic church he goes this is a this is a christian church son and he goes i go well anything i was broken i was crying sobbing and uh, he said but the past the choir pastors did you want to talk to him? i just said anything anything i was so broken and then um anyway long story short he told me he said you need jesus in your life so I accepted it. I accepted Jesus in my heart. I got born. I believe I got born again. But when I had my eyes closed, praying with him, I, I, I saw like a vision of the devil laughing at me. And I still felt tormented. I was tormented. I was still tormented, even though my, my spirit, I felt like something happened, but my mind was still tormented. And when I have, what happened is I, uh, what happened is I, I, I just listened to him as a pastor you know he was a religious man i didn't know anything about god about the word of god or anything at that time so what i so i just listened to what he said you know and he said just to read your word get into us you could come to this church which i ended up doing going to that church for years and um maybe he said you need to read the word of god it's the most important thing so that was very you know important thing instruction that he gave me that really helped me was the word so in the first three months that i was saved you know i was still tormented in my mind still suicidal thoughts you know and that the fear and and, and it, it just it just was it was overwhelming in my mind i i believe that i was born again in my spirit you know even though i didn't understand the difference between the spirit the soul and the flesh but um my mind i was still tormented even though i did believe that i was born again and I was doing what they told me to do. They said to read the word. I read the word in the first three months from cover to cover. And it scared me too, because I, that doesn't mean you know anything because you read it from cover to cover, right? Yeah, so, true. I mean, you know, and uh, and then it, some of the words like when in the Old Testament, you know, when God was speaking about, you know, destroying everything, the, the men, women, and children, people don't realize that was because that wasn't God's genetic creation. That was by the fallen angels, the thing yeah, like that. Yeah. Other story. But it was wasn't God's creation. But that that kind of stuff in the Bible at that time, because I had no knowledge, no revelation from the Holy Spirit at, the, at as a, that time, and uh, then I, then I just kept doing what that. I kept going back to the ministers, the pastors, the evangelists, and saying I was torment. I just feel this way, and you know, depressed and suicidal thoughts coming, and this fear and this scaring me because of those thoughts. And then he goes, they just said, just, you need to act on that word that you're reading. He goes, study, look, he continues studying the word. And I just kept doing what they told me, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I, I imagine most pastors would hope that their, or their congregants would, would listen to them, you know, and do what they asked them to do. So I just did what they told me to do, you know, and that, and the whole time I'm fighting these lies of the devil in my mind. You know, the devil's not going to come, Tom. He's not going to come and say, Tom, this is the devil, no, you know, right. uh, commit suicide. Otherwise, you wouldn't listen to it if you yeah, knew that, right? He just puts, right. He puts that thought in your mind and you don't yeah. realize that it's not you thinking that. It's him putting those thoughts in your mind, those fiery darts, what the Bible calls. So mm -hmm. anyway, so that, so 
so I was doing what the pastor said. He, he, the pastors would say, just say, I resist you, James 4, 7. I resist you in the name of Jesus. So I would say it. And they said, you need to say it because the devil needs to hear you. And so I would say it, you know, and then in my mind, there's thoughts going, this stuff is not real. <laughs> I thought of me thinking that, but it was the whole time it was the devil putting that thought in my mind yeah, that yeah. It's real, that this, um, that, you know, the, the, uh, um, uh, this is for this is just for people that are weak minded and this isn't real. You know, the word of God doesn't work. All these thoughts were going through my mind. Not, and I did not realize because of a lack of knowledge, even though I read the, the Bible cover to cover, it didn't mean anything. Yeah. You don't get any revelation from the word unless the Holy Spirit reveals you, opens the word to you. That's right. And Lord Jesus Christ also opens your understanding to the word. Well, anyway, I am. I just continued doing what they were doing anyway, even though I was fighting those thoughts. You know, the greatest, the good thing to know is that when you're going through something like that, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, it says, God will not allow you to be tested above what you are able to handle. God knows what you can handle. He knows you and you and I inside out. So he knows what we can handle. So anyway, a long story short is I, I, um, I just kept standing, you know, resisting and, and, and still meditating on the word, going to prayer groups, you know, prayer meetings and been going to church and uh, practically in a prayer meeting or church about six days a week, I think. But it was good because the whole time your spirit, your spiritual man is growing, you know, yeah. your spirit man is growing during that period of time. And you're meditating on the word. You're practicing the word by saying, I resist you, even though the devil's fighting you. It's, that's why there's a Fight, fight to faith, fight. yeah. So you know, for uh, First Timothy six six twelve, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. So you know, even though I was fighting those 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 thoughts that this isn't real, you know, Christianity doesn't work, and all that. Finally, about eight months into you know, that that seed of the word was growing inside me, you know. And even though practicing it, doing it, even though I was fighting the doubts and, and the unbelief, believing thoughts the devil was putting in my mind. I just, I just continued fighting and then um, trying to believe. And then, and then, you know, like I said, meditating on the word and sometimes the word would come alive. It was the Holy Spirit giving me revelation and it would encourage me certain verses. And then finally about eight, eight months into that battle, into that, that, that struggle, about eight months into that struggle, I, I, I was sitting and watching Stephen. I could just feel that oppression on me. And then I got mad. I got, I got mad. I guess I said, in the name of Jesus, get off of me. You get mad. Of, you get, you get mad of the devil. That's right. Right. Get mad. Yeah. I wasn't getting mad at God. Definitely. But you know, get mad at that devil because the devil. you know, you, you, you get tired of being bullied. Like any, sometimes, you know, even a little kid is tired of getting bullied, stands up and beats the bully. <laughs> well, what, when I did that, I physically, physically, like I physically felt that come on me in the beginning before I got saved. I physically felt that lift off of me, and that, that oppression, you know, and it, and it felt like I could breathe. That's how, that's how uh, suffocating that, that oppression was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I felt like I could breathe. And I thought reality set in, you know, re truth set in. I thought first thing that came to my mind was, there really is a devil. <laughs> that was the first thing. There really, that really was a devil. Yeah. You know, it felt so good. It felt like I could breathe because mm. it's suffocating when you're like depressed, you. yeah. suicidal. You know, and and I, and I said there really is a devil, and the word of God really does work. You know, and about ten minutes later, it it tried to come back, and mm -hmm. I said, "No, get off, get off." In the name of Jesus, you get out of here, mm -hmm. and it left. And I had them have any more problem with that, but it was so liberating and so. <laughs> it was so there was such a freedom <laughs> oh, excuse me yeah no problem but well, yeah the verse that um i'm trying to look it up so i'm kind of off the side here uh matthew 12 43 to 45 about you know we clean the house up but satan will try to come back and assist that he comes back and he finds the place clean and in order which tells that it was just the chaos a mess and Satan, Matthew 12, uh, Matthew 12, uh, 43, 45, and uh, he'll bring seven wars with him. So that's exactly, that's the warfare. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, that 
sure, you know, God has set us free, but we have to fight to maintain it because Satan will want to come back in that. Sorry, keep going. Praise the Lord. No, absolutely. Absolutely. We have, we have to. <laughs> oh. Excuse me. In Jesus no, name by stripes. I'm healed amen. From... You're healed oh. by Jesus stripes. Amen. <laughs> we reviewed okay. that. That's <laughs> amen. But anyway. Um, so, uh, you know, I was set free and I, I've been set free ever since and realizing that it was the word of God that set me free. It was, you know, staying in the word of God. You know, I did what the pastor told me, stay meditating in that word of God day and night. And I did. I just did because when you're in a circumstance like that, when you're, when you're suffocating under depression or suicidal thoughts and things like that, you know, you want, you want, you want to feel free. You want to feel Amen. the liberty that God's only God's word can give you from that. And I, and I got free. I mean, it didn't happen overnight, but what happened was the word of God because of my obedience to what they were, what they said. And because my obedience to seeking God, you know, uh, it, it, it grew in me. It's, it's like, it says in Mark chapter four, verses 26 through 28, it says first the blade, then the stem, then the full corn in the ear, which is the full manifestation of God manifesting his word in your life, you know, or, or that's how, that's actually an, an example Jesus gives also about the word, because he says in John, in Mark 4, 14, that the sower sows the word. Mm -hmm. Well, we sow the word by speaking it. That's how we sow the word. In fact, it says in Romans chapter 10, verses eight, it says, it says the, the word of God is, this is, is the, is, is, you know, the, the, the word of faith, which we preach is the word of God. And it's, it's, that's what we preach. That's what gives faith to people when they hear you and I preach the word to someone, mm. you know, when we, when we share about Jesus Christ or the word about someone, that word, the life in that word is what gives that person faith to receive Jesus. Amen. You know, and the same thing goes for, for that word of God in us, like by his stripes, you were healed past mm. tense. It's that same word and the life in that word that brings healing to that person's spirit because it's the, the sickness of, uh, a person's spirit has to be healed before that sickness goes. I mean, in other words, this uh, it, sickness in, in, in the body and is because there's something going on in the spirit realm. So that needs to be healed. And it, 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 by the word of God, when a person receives that, they get healed. And, all, and also there's the, also the power and the gifts of the spirit, that's, which is the power uh, that can heal a person instantly. But faith is how we're, God expects us to walk. Right. to live by faith to walk by faith you know and and that comes only by hearing and hearing god's word so and not only just hearing god's word like that like as i said i was hearing that in the beginning when i was under that oppression i was hearing it but it, you know it needs to get into the spirit of man that word gets once it gets down into that spirit into the ground the good soil then it produces the life then it produces the faith that word that 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 this these these logos this written word mm -hmm. it it produces the faith that comes out of the mouth from the heart and the mouth that's where faith comes from so and it has an impact in your life and it'll change your life and change other people's lives that you believe god to change amen it's uh you were talking earlier how you were said that you have to speak against the devil they have to speak these things and it's the same with our salvation like romans we're just in romans there but romans 10 9 10 says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that the lord jesus and god has raised him from the dead you shall be saved and that is so that's the way to do it we have to speak these things your faith out of the abundance of the heart your mouth will speak so you got to get like brother Alvarez mentioned you got to get the word into you got to read the bible you got to ask god to talk to you i mean that's we, we keep saying it's a living word, and it is. It is like I, I open up and I say, Father, talk to me. And it's just like things jump out of the, out of the Bible. I'm like, I've never seen that. And I've read the Bible, like you say, cover to cover. And it's just like, wow, that was in there? And that is the thing. So, you know, just to encourage those who are listening that with Brother Albert sharing, it is so, so true that we have to speak <laughs> these things. And not only that, the devil, his biggest, somebody told us, his biggest tactic is to try to not, prove or show himself or or people don't believe that he is and that's the biggest he is the father of deception and one of them is oh yeah there's no devil don't sweat it no there is there is a devil and he's trying to attack us and it's a warfare we have to understand and our warfare is 
is our faith, is our faith in Jesus and that what he's done on the cross, the blood he shed. Um, it was this this morning uh, during devotions with uh, Bev, my wife there. I just want to share, if I could share this verse here. Sure, it, go ahead. Okay. Um, in first John one. So uh, we call it the near the back by revelation there. If you're looking in first John one and it says, this is from the beginning, which we have heard now back then they obviously didn't have printed Bibles and stuff. So they had to speak to each other, but it, it does mean so much more today about hearing these things, you know, that we've heard and that we've seen with our eyes and we've looked upon and our hands have handled. And I just want to get down to it that, um, uh, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the light being Jesus, the word, and uh, we have fellowship with one another. I feel kinship right now. I'd like to mention, I've never met Brother Albright. I watched him on YouTube with uh, Brother Walter there. And I said, well, it's such a privilege to meet him. But we have this, I, I hope you feel, I feel like this kinship that, hey, there's another brother in the Lord. Actually, we dress the same. We're working, we're in black here, but there you go. Um, that we just have this kinship in the Lord between us. And that is, so if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, but it doesn't stop there. And that the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And so if you've not received Jesus here, we will do a prayer at the end here. But uh, this is the one thing we have to speak. This is why it's so important to speak these things. I mean, we can think, and that's where the battle feed is right here. Like those thoughts that he was having about suicide and depression. I'm sure we've all gone through that. I've had thoughts like, where did that come from? And that's Satan. He's trying to talk to us. And you think, well, you know, if, the, if you don't believe that there's a devil, then you think it's you that's doing it. And that's where, right. sadly, a lot of people have fallen. So we need to realize, yes, there is a devil, but bigger than that. Don't look at the devil all the time. Look to the guy. I'm sorry, I don't want to say it the wrong way. I'm just trying to make it simplest. <laughs> look to the one who has delivered us, who has won when Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. I mean, that's it. Game over. We have won. And I like the last word in the Bible says, amen. So be it. So yes, we have to speak these things. And if you have this torments, like Brother Alvaro was mentioning, you know, the going through that, and we do open doors. It's called, I don't know if it's a spiritual term, but it's trespass rights, that we open the door for Satan to come in and oppress us. Well, with the same idea, we open the door to the Holy Spirit to come in to convict us. And from that, we speak out these things. So yes, speak to that mountain in front of you. Speak to that. You do have authority. We were talking about this a couple of days ago. We have the authority. And that's another deception that Satan has, that you're, you're nothing. You're a nobody. You are somebody. You are a child of the king. You're, wow. I mean, that, I pray that that revelation, like I always say, that the, the binders comes off our eyes and we see the reality of this walk, this warfare we're in, and we can see the souls around us that need Jesus, then this makes it more living word. I mean, it, it, you know, it's one thing to read the Bible. That's just head knowledge, but to know it and to speak it. And you know, I love that because that was the same spot. The word, because I had this dream one time of this box or this cage coming at me and I'm going, you know, like, you're, I'm so scared. I can't breathe. I'm actually woke up and I'm, I couldn't speak. And I just hear that small, still voice. See, that's the Lord. He's gentle. He's peaceful. He just yeah. says, rebuke it. And I go, well, I rebuke you. In you know, if I rebuke it myself, who so, am I? But that's just it. In Jesus, we are now his blood bought. We are part of his kingdom. And I said, I still remember this. That's why this is like, what, 40, 30 years ago. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And it's gone. I go, exactly. You're like, whoa, that's cool. And, you know, that's it. We have authority. And I, and I, and like you read the gospel, anytime a demon came by, they fell and they spit and they made a whole bunch of noise. And Jesus said, be still. He spoke to the waves, the ocean and like, be still. That's the authority we have. So, but if you can't have this authority, because we read in the book of Acts, it was the seven sons of Sceva, whatever. They tried doing the same thing. We say in the name of Paul, whatever. It, it's not a formula. It's a faith that Brother Albert, the faith we have in Christ. And the faith is simply trusting that if God said it, I believe it, that sells it. So yeah, you can try to do this on your own. You're not going to do it. But through Jesus, and first off, you have to receive Jesus in your heart. And for those who maybe you backslid or something like that, God still loves you. He still has given you a chance. He will always give a chance. We are the ones that have to make the choice. So sorry, then yeah, if you go on, brother, you had something to share with us too. No, no, go no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm gonna roll too here. But yeah, yeah. spirit of God on you. So go ahead, finish. Amen. With all 
So yeah. that's just it. If you've not received Jesus, if you know this, it's not a religion. It's a belief in the heart. You know, I know the word of faith is being abused a lot, and we've kind of, you know, rightfully so. Even born again, and I believe that John, the Gospel of John, the fourth Gospel. If you need a, if you want to start somewhere, you can start with the Gospel of John. It's the fourth one in, and it says in the beginning. I mean, that's that sets the tone. Everything was set in the beginning. God did this, and God, and the Word became life, and that was Jesus. He, the, the word became flesh. He dwelt, did I say light? The word dwelt, became flesh and dwelt among us. And so with that, we have to realize that this is a living word. And so ask Jesus to show you these things. I, we do that every time we pray. He says, Father, show me. And it, 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 it goes without, it never, never fails. It's like, wow, it's a living word. And so like today's example, I was trying to share, and here we are talking about the darkness and light where we're in dark. I don't know if this is, you know, it's kind of neat that this happened. <laughs> But, um, you know, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sins. And that we pray that, you know, it says, and here, here's the promise that we have, um, that basically, it, verse 9, 1 John 1, 9, I've been trying to text all the, the verses you've been doing, but 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, now what does confess mean? Now, you know, let's not go with a religious way about going to somebody and doing when just go right to go to Father God. I mean, that's the same thing. I always thought I had to go through somebody. And I never did very good with that. But, you know, the, God does once you talk to me and I thought, yeah, <laughs> you know, we have a direct connection to the Father. And so if we uh, sorry, uh, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So what's the first step? We got to speak this. We got to confess this to the Father. If you're sitting in your room, if you're watching this, you know, uh, on the, uh, you know, get on your knees and just, Father, I confess I'm a sinner. I need forgiveness. And what does it promise right here? And if you want to quote this verse, First John one nine, you uh, said First John one nine. So sorry about that. Uh, it, my wife tells me to slow down because I rattle off too fast. Uh, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins, and that's not the end of it, and cleanses from all unrighteousness. Amen. You are washed. That's why we say you're washed with the blood. We are, we are made righteous through Christ. It's a, you know, I had the same thing. There's this thing lift off him. Of and it's just like, I'm free. I'm free. But only do you feel free. You feel washed. You feel cleansed. You don't have this evil thing on you. So one John one nine, that's the, that's the verse I wanted to share today with you folks that uh, that's a promise to us that uh, if we confess, and that's what Brother Albert's been saying all along, we have to speak these things, and speak it in faith, and faith is not hard, I mean, it's just a small little, okay, Father, I trust you, forgive me, come into my life, receive you, um, that's, that's where it is, but go, go ahead, brother, yeah, actually, you know, I feel maybe we should go into the prayer of salvation right now, for those who are listening, rather than waiting till the end of the service, well, let's do it right now. Let's, if you guys are listening, those who are, I know this is somebody out there that's been listening to this, maybe right now, maybe 10 years, Lord Terry's down the road. The thing is, is the word is always alive. And so when you hear this, this is what God is talking to you. And that is so cool. And there's billions of people out there, God's talking to you right now. You need to confess your sin. You need to humble yourself before the Father. You know, pride is a horrible thing. You know, it's good to have a little bit of yay team and all that, but no, no, no. It's this, it's this foolish pride that we have that I'm good. I don't need to do. It. I work my way. No, we have to humble ourselves before the Father. And it takes a bigger man to stand up and say, you know, there is a God. There's somebody bigger than me. You know, it's not weakening ourselves, but it is admitting I need help from the Father. And that's just it. And he's willing. He's a gentleman. He's not going to barge in. The Holy Spirit is a comforter. He's not a, he's not a blaster. So if you're, if you're sitting here listening to this and, and like, say, let's move into the prayer and I'll, brother, I'll have you, have you, uh, if you want to do the, the prayer with us, sure. um, but just right off the bat, just to reinforce that one John one nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. If you want this right now, just follow along with brother Albert. And uh, if you want me to parrot you or whatever to help people, like you say the prayer and I'll, you know, Tom, it's important to people recognize and realize, especially if you don't know Christ or don't know a lot of anything about the Bible. Like I said, I didn't, you did it. None of us knew before we got born again. And, and, and we didn't just instantly know everything when we got born again either. The process. It, it, yeah. it was, it was, a, it has, it involves us seeking God, drawing close to God. He said, draw close to me. I'll draw close to you. It's us drawing close to him 
It's in, and the way we do that is through the word. I mean, because anytime you and I meditate on the word of God, we're fellowshipping with God. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus said that when you, when you get received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the Holy Spirit, he, it says that me and the father will come and we will sup with you. That's, that's how you sup with the Lord is you with the father mm -hmm. and the son yeah. is that you, you and I meditate on the word because he is the word. You just read that mm -hmm. in John chapter one, verse one. You know, it, 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 we're, we're supping with him. We're communing with him. And like you, like you did yourself, you, you said, Lord, speak to me. Or, or, and I do it all the time. I still, to this day, every day, there's a lot of things I don't know. And there's still that I, you know, because the word of God is eternal. And I just mm -hmm. say, Father, what, what did you mean by this? I know you mean something else. Mm -hmm. I got a revelation that you've given me about this same verse or this chapter or something like that. I, I've got a revelation that I believe it and it's helped me and it's blessed me and it's ministered to others as well as to myself. I said, but there's, I believe there's something else you have in there for me and he will show it to you. If you seek, you will find, if you knock, the door will be open. If you That's ask, right. you shall receive, you know, right. if you don't ask, you're not going to see It's just like That's any right. teacher. You know, if you go to any teacher, if you're a student in high school, you go to a teacher or college, if you don't ask them, they're not going to tell you, you know, you don't, seek them out to find an answer to something you're not going to find it you know <clears throat> so it's it's the same way the father he's not going to force himself on anyone we have to seek knock and ask mm -hmm. and also have to realize that we are a, a three-part being you know we're spirit soul and body you know uh the voice the voice of the the, the mind or the of the soul is 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 um is reason the voice of the body is feeling mm -hmm. you know the voice of the of the spirit is our conscience yeah. You know, that's why the Bible mentions about conscious, the having a good, clear conscience before God. And, and, and whenever we meditate on the word of God, it changes the way we think. It changes our conscience. Uh, it, it, it adds to our consciousness more of God. Of, we're more mm -hmm. conscious of him and we're more obedient to him. The, the more we meditate on the word of God daily, the more we obey the word and, <coughs> and our conscious of God inside us, of the greater one that's in us. And then we're able to, to act with, in fact, the scripture tells us that we're to be conformed to the image of Christ. <laughs> right. Let me give you a verse here. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and this is John 14, 10. <clears throat> Jesus said this, John 14, 10, Jesus says, do you believe that I am in the father and the father in me? The words, the words that I speak unto you i speak not of myself you know, people have to remember the humanity of christ because i speak not of myself uh i, I speak not of, uh, i speak not of myself but the father that dwells or that lives in me he does the works you know it's the father that 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 lives in each one of us when we accept jesus as our lord and savior he lives in us and he does the works he's the one that's changing transforming by his spirit by the spirit of christ that's within us he is transforming and changing our lives on a daily basis but it does involve there's a responsibility to every believer to seek to knock and to ask because you know you could get born again you know um or like you put it back to a teacher i mean a, a student and a teacher i mean i could sit in class and not you know and hear all kinds of teaching all day long in, or in school but if they don't apply, they don't seek knock and ask and want to learn, want to receive that knowledge. It's not going to do anything. It's not going to, they're not going to learn it. You, no. you know, I, I've done that. I've done that in school before, you know. Uh, but if you weren't interested in a certain subject, I mean, you're not going to seek and you're not going to learn anything. But it's totally different by the word of God because the word is spirit and it's life. It's transforming. It changes the way we think. It changes. It heals our body. It, it, um, renews our minds, you know, the way we, our thought processes uh, to think more like Jesus. And when we, more like Jesus, meaning he wasn't afraid of demonic principalities, powers. He wasn't afraid of death. He was, you know, because he rebuked death off of uh, Lazarus. And Lazarus. He called Lazarus forth and he came forth. And God has, I, God has used me to do that a few times. So, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's recognizing, being conscious, you know, our spirit with our spiritual man conscious of god the greater one in you and knowing what he's already provided for you what he's already done and what he's requiring of us which is number one thing is to grow in christ grow in the knowledge it tells us that in scripture to grow in the knowledge of god 
and to be conformed to the image of Christ. What image is that? Well, what image do you have of Christ? To me, I have, he's God, you know, yeah. can do anything, you know, and, and like you said, when he hung on that cross, it fin it's finished. He finished the, yeah. the plan and the purpose of God, you know, so mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, it's what's within you and I as believe we can, if we can't, don't get this word in us daily, you know, uh, we don't get the word of God in us. It, 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 this is what the Holy Spirit uses to create in us the image of, yeah, of yeah. Christ. The yeah. image of Christ. And then yeah. in the Bible calls it, you know, it says in the second chapter of Hebrews that that, it, that there's many sons. He's called many sons, uh, you know, where he's our he's our brother, he's our captain, the Lord Jesus Christ, but it's called many sons unto salvation, unto unto the sonship, you know, that we're supposed to walk in. And uh it, it's a it, it's so important, the word of God. This is why I emphasize that all the time, how important That's it right. is. That's right. So, so we'll, we'll just go ahead and pray you. You can't. You can't even un begin to understand without Christ accepting no. Christ as the Lord and to, Savior. To the natural mind, this is foolish, but yeah. to the if I can say the spiritual, the our our spirit, it's life. And and I one minister once said, if you eat every day to feed your body, you should eat every day to feed your spirit, and that is eating is feasting on the Word of God. And so, yeah, no, uh, we're, we'll definitely will be praying for Ukraine all this, but right now, I, because I feel in the sense that you know people who who know about god because i did uh, when i was going to the church uh you know god was out there summer floating around jupiter or something like that and really didn't care about me because i mean he's a big guy he's got a universe to run so you know who cares about tom but when he gave me that revelation that you know i love you out of all these he loves us all because uh Beth was sharing yesterday john three sixteen, god so loved the world that he gave his only and so he loves every one of us and it and it, his will is for us because that's the prayer we all you know a little good wave our father who art in heaven how be thy name thy kingdom come thy what thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. and his will is for the for us not to go to hell not to die in our sins not to be unclean unrighteous his will so that's why jesus came and he died for us and and rose again to prove that he was the perfect sacrifice but exactly that but you know we have to speak these things it's not this head knowledge oh yeah god god loves me or whatever or you know read the word because people have studied the bible and paul says that ever learning and never coming to the truth i don't want to be like that i want to know what the lord is talking and it's a living word so yeah we'll just lead you because I, I feel that you know it's it's you're ripe for the picking right now the harvest is ripe and you want to know jesus and nobody's ever told you the simplest way of receiving christ and then what we'll do is we'll we will because healing is a children's bread we can't get the cart before the horse we got to get the proper sequence so you need to be born again you need to receive jesus in your heart you need to be remade renewed you need to be made righteous like we just read that in uh, First John 1, that you're made righteous, but you have to confess that. So um, did you want to lead us into the prayer, brother, or do you want me to? Well, let's just go ahead and pray. Yeah. You don't know Jesus, your Lord. So say this prayer, say it, say it to the Lord, say it from your heart to the mm. Lord. You can't run a game on God. Nobody. I don't care how good of a orator you are or how intellectual you are. You can't run a game on God, no, period. No. Bottom line, trust me, I tried. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So, so, you know, just say this prayer from your heart to the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the son of God, mm -hmm. that you came in the flesh and you died for my sins and you rose from the dead for my justification. Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart to be Lord of my life. I, re I confess and I repent of all my sins. And Lord, I also forgive anyone that's ever hurt me in any way. I forgive yes. them with my heart. Yes. Yes. as an act of faith and lord jesus i thank you for forgiving me now lord I, you are the baptizer i ask you lord jesus to baptize me with the holy spirit i need him he will instruct me teach me guide me he will give me a heavenly language to communicate directly to you with you father so i ask you for the holy spirit lord and he is the power that i need to walk in a daily a victorious life so I ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. And by faith, I receive him into my heart right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I pray your creation in Christ Jesus. All things have passed away. All things have become brand new. Amen. Renewed. 
Oh, thank you, Father. If you prayed this, definitely by all means, uh, drop us a line, uh, Brother Walter's channel here. Um, text him, let us know. Uh, read your word every day. Confess this, these things. Even read it out loud. It's good to hear it. Uh, find a Bible believing church. It's good to have fellowship uh, in that, in the sense there. But talk to the Father like we're talking to each other. He wants, he wants, this is, this is the thing. The God of the universe wants to have our fellowship. He, you know, and, and uh, so, yes, you confess this, confess this in your heart, believe and receive. And exactly the Holy, and sometimes I, I'm glad you did that, brother, because a lot of times the prayer of salvation, we, we, we only do half. Well, this is how you get saved. Well, you need the power. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. And the same thing, you ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to receive this power. And somebody said dudamos, the, the, it's like dynamite. That's where the word came from. And yeah, receive not only Jesus in your heart, but receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive them all because that's what's, it's like, I don't feel you know, like steak and potatoes is like you're missing out the whole meal here, you know? So yeah, receive Christ, but maybe that's what's missing in your life is you've not acknowledged the Holy Spirit to receive because there's yeah. God, the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son, Jesus, they're all, we have to acknowledge them all. And so Absolutely. receive Jesus, but receive the Holy Spirit for those who need that and don't worry about the denominational thinking or people saying it's not for today or or whatever because i was scared but you know it's a beauty because the word becomes life to you and that's the whole thing the connection there uh praise the lord so yeah if you if this is what you've done and i i feel like some folks that you know they they feel like they're the glass ceiling they've they've only reached so far with god this is how you break through is through the power of the holy spirit so receiving jesus receive the holy spirit you will be free and it's a whole different ballgame trust me it's it's yeah. it's a living word but we need that power we need that dynamite to make this work and did not even say that jesus you know he was baptized in this oh, not that sorry uh filled the holy spirit and with power now the holy the father you can't do it but i don't want to get into the theology you think about it because god is still god but he's assigned it for us to do this way as if you want to say it this way, we have to ask for this. I mean, be nice if everything was just dropped in our laps. But I think it's like you're mentioning, like a teacher, because I know I do a lot of instruction as well. I do online training, uh, IT certification. And if people don't ask me questions, I, I get worried because are you guys understanding what's going on here? You know, is, is it just you're just listening to me talk? But when somebody asks a question, I, I'm like, hey, somebody's paying attention. Somebody wants to know more. And that's what the father's like. You know, here's the word. But if nobody asks, it's, it, I, I'm sure he feels, well, obviously we must feel more than I do. Why don't they talk to me? Why don't they ask? And the other thing with prayer, and, and you know, we're all guilty. We, we always come to Father and Father, blah, 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 blah. But we never listen. It's just like if you came to me and just rattled off and then bye, I'm like, what, don't I get to say anything? So, you know, listen to the Father. And it is, it's a small civil, is it Elijah? Sorry if I got screwed up. Listen. But, uh, there you go. Listen, Listen to the word. And and uh, was Elijah was the one that was praying and the, the noise, the boom? No, it wasn't Elijah, it was Jeremiah. Oh boy, this is not good. Uh, the small, still voice is what I'm trying to get at. You heard the earthquake, you heard the winds, and God was not there. But the small, still voice, that's how the Lord works. He's not into show business. He's not into the booming stuff. He's into the intimate fellowship. And I think that's it. When, when you whisper to somebody's ear, you know, nice things, a secret, you know. Like even as kids, we used to whisper, you know, this is, well, what kind of secret is you're telling everybody. But you whisper into each other's ears. And that's kind of like an intimate you and I know something that nobody else does. And that's what the Father wants to have, that little time of whispering to you, that he'll talk to you. So, yes, if you receive Christ uh, right now, definitely welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. And if you want to know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, drop Brother Albert, me, uh, Brother Walter, whatever, to say, hey, what is this thing? Um, start with the book of Acts. Start with the book of Acts. And that's where he says, you need this, you know, and then the power came upon them. And then they spoke the tongues and they read this stuff. I mean, why not? It's all part of the blessing. So don't let the past denominations, don't let the devil, because he's deceived a lot of people. Oh, you don't need this. Well, yeah, we do. And that's the thing. This is a spiritual warfare. We have some prayers here um, to, to pray for Ukraine, because obviously, man, uh, we don't, you know, speaking about warfare, it, it's, we so desensitized to us. But yeah, you were mentioning Vietnam. Uh, you came from Vietnam. I was just too young to, to uh, well, I was up in Canada here, but uh, I knew about what's happening there. I had friends from there. Uh, one of my friends was one of the tunnel rats 
that would go through the tunnels with a knife and uh, I never spoke much about it, but uh, it leaves a, a very hard thing in your heart. And God had to break him too, because you have to harden your heart with all, it's just a self-preservation over there. So to, to when I hear people that receive Christ that were ex-military, because I used to be ex-military as well. And uh, so you see that, yeah, we need a strong military, but we need to be soft towards the father because he is the main, he's the, he's our general. You know, we have earthly generals and God's put people in positions and all that stuff, even the bad ones, but uh, we have the father to go to. So yeah, right now in Ukraine, uh, man, sorry, I'm not going to say these names, right? But Kirkroft and uh, Donbass and Mark, I know you're going to try. I'm sorry. All I know Ukraine is Slava Bowl, but um uh, the pastors and believe, the believers and occupied, there's their pastors, believers, there's volunteers going in and rescuing people. I saw a video that Brother Walter has on his channel, if you haven't subscribed to it, uh, people lifting them in wheelchairs into the trains and stretchers to get them out of the cities. Uh, it's just wanton bombing of the place. And that's just, it's just the spirit of murder. We've been praying against that and evil. But we pray for this, this Psalm 91, that the angels of the Lord encamp us around those people, that they will guide them in all their ways. No evil shall befall them. If you've not read Psalm 91, then this, this is the day we have to do it. Uh, and also, don't forget about the other places like Taiwan right now with China and Japan. We have a lot of believers over there. I know a few ministers with brother, through Brother Tony in japan uh, the snipes and so on and then and then taiwan and then north korea i i feel for kim sung i hope i said his name right he needs to repent and receive jesus so that his people be free and south korea too of course protect them i mean we pray for these leaders that lord you convict them uh putin uh and all these that they they don't listen to those evil i, I somebody told me through uh connections i have that he's listening to a greek ortho i shouldn't say whoever it is but i'll just say he's giving him advice and saying it's like a holy war it's not it's deception and that whoever that priest is the lord shut him up and save him too but we pray yeah. for these leaders that they open their eyes that they see the light of the christ and that's what we were talking about the light the light the light the word is the light and if we walk in the light we have fellowship with one another and the light is the word of god and and that's the only way we can do that so let's pray now um uh, sorry i've got to restart my pad here let's pray for now and don't forget yeah cuba and again i i could keep mentioning i'm sorry there's so many countries i wish I could rile them all off, but God has placed you in the, like we had a brother from Thailand. I'm thinking Bangkok, uh, Ceylon. I had a prayer request come this morning. Somebody in the Middle East, I can't say what country they're in because they're doing missionary work and, you know, the, they don't want to be caught, but they're going through a lot of trouble. So, you know, we pray the Psalm 91 and, and, and yes, persecution and all that, but they stand strong because that's what draws a lot of people. I mean, the, the, the story about uh, when, they were crucifying the Christians in the Colosseum with the lions and all that stuff. And they were singing praises to God and people are getting saved in the stands, jumping down. Says, I want that. We want to have that same thing. We want to portray that. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. We have the peace of Christ. We have Jesus in our hearts. So if you haven't received that, but yeah, definitely let's pray for this and, and we'll wrap up with a, uh, wow, this day's flying or this time's flying. Uh, pray for USA and I'll pray for Canada if you want, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I call us the lay of deceit church up here in Canada, lazy deceit. We think we got it good. We're prospering health. We don't need anything. And we don't know we're poor, wretched, miserable, blind and naked and yet god waken our eyes open our eyes so we pray for revival but brother uh do you have any uh, countries in your heart that's specific like i think a hungry poland because my mother's background well, it's, yeah i mean I, my heart goes out to all these countries you know i've yeah. been to different countries and my heart goes to all of them even to russia you know because i have yeah. some friends in russia that you know uh hopefully have not been deceived because i've heard some testimony that there's been some pastors are in agreement with that war. I don't see how a person that's following Jesus could be in agreement with it. Mm -hmm. and, not, and not recognizing that we're not just dealing with the Word of God says with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So we have to, you know, and, and, and I want to remind everybody because one of my main messages that I always try to teach or preach on is uh, the authority of the believer. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's you know, Luke 10, 19, Jesus says, I give you authority over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I mean, you have to believe that. You not just have to just 
read the scripture, memorize it. You have to believe that. And, and, I, and I take joy, like in Ukraine, what's going on there, that some of the brothers and sisters that are, that, are, that are emboldened by the word of God, by the spirit of God that's within them, and by the trust that they have of, of, uh, in God to protect them, no matter where they're at, what they're doing. Pastor Sergei in Poltava is one of them. He's one of my, he called me his hero. I call him my hero because yeah. he's in food into, into uh, uh, Kharkov, into the places of Kharkov, which is being shelled and, you know, probably dodging bullets and, and missiles, you know, and he's taking food and supplies to people and he's doing it courageously. I can hear it in his voice in the videos that he sends me, you know, and I can hear it in his voice and that's nothing but God that can do that, that can give him that boldness, that courage mm -hmm. and that strength. And I believe, and as he believes also that nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know, we take authority over these principalities, powers. We are the authorities. We are the ultimate authorities and the dominion powers on this earth now because of what Christ has done for us. And I, and I believe uh, that in the church in the beginning, that was being established. But I believe now it should be well established, which unfortunately it's not. But that needs to be taught. It needs to be uh, practiced. And, mm -hmm. and once we do that, we'll see changes. I mean, we've, we've done that. We've prayed for things. I prayed for my, uh, let, let me give you a real quick testimony. Yep. We, I grew up, we only have about 50 people that come to my meetings on in, in here in, in California. And, you know, and, but we get together and we pray and we prayed uh, in agreement one time d during the, the cocaine thing with, with Pablo Escobar. And it seemed like the government couldn't get him. The U.S. government was trying to get him. They couldn't get him. He seemed like he was untouchable. But I got tired of people being, you know, uh, lives being destroyed because of the drugs. Yeah. So I said, let's pray against that. Let's bind that spirit that's because it, people don't realize that those, those drug cartels, they actually go to witches to protect, to, to ask, ask, pray for them or do whatever heebie-jeebies so that yeah. they can protect them, you know. That's so, useless. Yeah. So uh, so we have to take authority over that. And, let's and do we, that. Amen. we bound the spirit that's, that's protecting him. And in a week's time, right after our prayer, I mean, people say, well, that's, that was just coincidence. That's an unbeliever that would say, think yeah. that way. But, you know, we believe what we're praying. I know if not all the people that were there with me were believing, I know I did. And maybe one or two or three others, who, who knows? I'm, I got in those hearts. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. we believe that what we prayed, we released the authority and the power of God, binding the spirit that was protecting him. A week later, a little wrecked day six man or 12 man team shot and killed him. I mean, that wasn't our intention. We prayed that he would get saved. Yeah. You know, we, we prayed that that would be stopped, but that doesn't stop there. That's why we have to be, make, be vigilant and maintain a prayer of authority all the time because you can bind and lose to cast the devil out and, and he'll come back in another place or start up in another person. So you have to be vigilant, you know, um, you know, you, you know, like the like the the devil, there's a point in time for them to be judged. You can't cast them into hell. Leave them there now. It's the devils when they when they came to Jesus in Mark chapter one. I think it is. Is they said, Lord, if you come to torment us before the time, there's mm -hmm. a time for them to be tor extremely tormented and cast into the lake of fire. But in the meantime, they're still here. You bind and cast them out. They might find somebody else. Well, oh, they're not going to find. A, they're going to find a place where the people don't know their authority, their dominion. And then, then try to creep in there and cause damage, try to kill, steal, and destroy like the word of God says the devil comes and do and yes, does. Right. So we have to be re remain vigilant, continually binding and loosening, not just doing it once and then expect the saying that that's it. We don't have to do it. No, you have to do it every day because they're demonic spirits, God constantly coming and going, and, 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 and you, you, we're casting them out. And we have to maintain that vigilance together with the Ukrainians, they have to believe that, That's you know, right. um, if you got to believe this authority, this dominion we have, That's right. otherwise he's going to, the devil will take advantage of you and cause you more problems than you can handle. But in the name of Jesus, let's just take authority over the principalities, okay. the power. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come mm -hmm. boldly before yes, your throne yes, of grace. Yes. We thank you for the authority of the name of Jesus. Amen. All authority and all power is in that name. When he when he rose from the dead, he said, "All authority, all power, has been given unto him." Well, that he delegated to the believer.
in Jesus' name, as we believe that we have that authority, that dominion that Christ secured for us, we exercise it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind the principalities, the powers mm-hmm. and in Russia and, and under the, the, the political realm, mm-hmm. <laughs> the politicians. Mm-hmm. Jesus' name. <laughs> Jesus' name, we speak Russia. against these things. In yes. the name of, we bind the powers. Amen. In Jesus' name, according to Matthew 16, 19. These are the keys you gave us. Whatever we bind or declare illegal on earth shall have been declared illegal in heaven. Whatever we has been declared legal in heaven, we shall declare or speak and release legally on earth. <laughs> so in the name of Jesus, we declare illegal these acts of war from Turn Russia and from these principalities and powers manipulating politicians in Russia and then even in other nations. In the name of Jesus, we bind you, command you, shut up, command you to be loose from that area, command you to be loose, those people, <coughs> those, those leaders, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we loosen, we declare peace. That's, the, that's the declared legal in heaven, your peace, your joy, your prosperity, Lord, your victory also over these principalities and powers. We release the authority in the name of Jesus yes, over these principalities power. We release victory on the Ukrainian side, Lord. And also any corruption in that country is removed by the authority of the name of Jesus. We pray for America in the name of Jesus. We bind the, the spirit of corruption, the spirit yes, of lawless, lawlessness and corruption yes, that is manifesting in our government, in our in our agencies, in this country, in Jesus' name, and also in Canada. In the name of Jesus, the, the spirit of lawlessness, breaking the laws of the land, the constitutions. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we bind you, command you to shut up and command you to be cast out. Amen. In the name of Jesus, of these leaders, in Jesus' name, in Amen. our country, in our government, in our agencies, our, 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 our judicial system, in Jesus' name. And also in Canada, also in, all the, in Europe. Also on Cuba, in the name of Jesus, also in Mexico and South America, Lord, in Russia, Ukraine, in the Middle East, Father, in the name of Jesus, in Africa, in the name of Jesus, Father, in India, Lord, in Jesus' name, in China, in the name of Jesus, we speak to you, principalities and powers, and we bind you, cast you out of the governments in Jesus name. And we loosen Lord, your will, your kingdom come, your will, your kingdom in these countries, your That's will right. to be done Lord on earth in these countries as it is in heaven. heaven. Now Amen. Lord, not Jesus in the kingdom name. to come, but now, now. Your word says that we should now. do it. So we loosen Amen. it now in the name of Amen. Jesus, according Amen. to Matthew 16, 19. And we believe Amen. that it's done in your name, Lord Jesus. We Amen. thank you for it. We expect Jesus. I expect to hear good reports, and Amen. even in, even in the fake news, Lord, Amen. in Jesus' name, and in Amen. other places, we'll hear about the effects of these prayers, the effects Thanks, of God. this faith that we yes. are releasing right now in these countries, in our nations, in Jesus' name. Jesus Amen. Name. Jesus' name. <laughs> I agree with you, brother. It's just two more gathered together on Amen. this, and two more agree on anything. And the verse I've, I've been wanting to share. Deuteronomy 32, 13, where one puts ten thousand, one puts a thousand flight to ten thousand. That's where our collective prayer works. It's not Amen. the numbers of people, but there is a spiritual principle about agreement. I mean, that's why God caused the Tower of Babel to fall apart, because he said way back when when they were building this tower to God, and they caused them all to speak different languages because man, once they agree upon, they can do a lot of things. And we see that when people come together. It's a lot, lot easier having more people. So I totally, I, I totally agree with you. And like I was mentioning, you're talking about the drug cartel, uh, Mexico, Cuba. Cuba is not so much the oppression and the pastors there. The, the freedom come upon that nation. We speak in Jesus' name. And again, we speak to the principality and powers. We speak to the heavenly rulers, the satanic things, because they are influencing the the leaders. And we and then we prayed that the leader's eyes open up. And I was praying that came upon me to, that their eyes open to see what's awaiting them. 
you know, yeah. life after death is hell and damnation, a separation from God, a loneliness, a darkness. I and mean, we think hellfire, sure, but really it's a separation from God. It's a loneliness. It's this horrible, horrible feeling. And I don't want that for anybody, nor does the Father. And these leaders, they're heading that way because even more greater a judgment upon them than, you know, this is rather be a millstone uh, tied around their neck and thrown in the ocean than to offend a little one. And how many people... Oh, Father, we just pray that th this, this, yeah, we speak to that. Thank you, brother. You know, the authority we have, and we speak like to the cartel, the Mexican cartel, the, the drug. Father, that they repent and they see the danger that they're heading towards. And of course, yes, uh, the repentance come upon their hearts and, and a revival come to that country yeah. and deliverance from the religious spirits and all that's going on down there. Father, the curse we get rid of that curse. We speak life into them. The light of the word. The, the, like I, I saw these sun rays breaking through a cloud into various spots. It'd be nice if the whole thing, but the, the cloud, the darkness, the evil that's over our land, the light will shine through and hit the various people. And that's one of you folks that you're crying unto the Father. He hears your prayer, but you must believe. You must receive. Yeah. Remember the, the, the leper, or not the leper, the, the father with the, the daughter. And, and he says, you know, forgive my unbelief, Lord, but strengthen my belief. You know, that's if I can paraphrase that way. Yeah, it's a fight. And you know, God understands that. And it just just talk to the father but yes we we take authority thank you brother God, hallelujah we take authority yes we speak to those principality and powers you know over mexico father and then over venezuela uh in nepal and in india and pakistan are having issues right now father this unrest the the world is looking for a leader and that's the way the world is going we don't go that way we really have a leader his name is jesus and Amen. we need to follow him and we need yeah exactly what does he speak well how do you know you have to read his word to get into it but this is the authority we're talking about so god has placed you in your country for a reason so you need to speak you know it'd be nice if we could do it but that's not the way god's intent you know Amen. we're not the middleman go right to the father and say father just like we saw today in the Bible, I want light. To, I want the light of the word to come to my nation. Um, the one verse there I, that came to me yesterday in, in uh, Psalm 67, God be merciful unto us. And that's what most people stop at. But he says, and shine, uh, sorry, and bless us and cause your face. I mean, if that's not a merciful God, you know, God be merciful unto us and bless us. So we, you listening to your countries, pray Father, bless us, bless us, bless us, and cause your face to shine upon us. And here's the verse, that your way may be known. How would the way be known? You have to Amen. study the word. A uh, way be known, and that uh, you're saving health among the nations. I mean, that, uh, that's just like, bam. That's what we're here to pray for. We pray for the nations. God so loved the world. And that, that was a revelation. The Bev, you know, sometimes you, you read verses and kind of like, yeah, that's, that's a nice verse. But how much more so we see the Father's love. So, yes, um, we for those countries we prayed for. And definitely the way America goes, the world goes. And so we, we want to pray. We speak against that corruption and pray for, for, for the president, the bid, and then all the little feel. And up here at Trudeau and all the little, I don't like calling them minions because you're supposed to respect the authority. But all these little people, their little voices, exactly. Shut up in Jesus' name, so that the word, and we bring upon, Proof. yep, harvesters, Proof. yep, and we speak, and the harvesters, the perfect harvesters will speak to these men's hearts, and ladies' hearts, that their hearts be revealed to the revelation of Jesus Christ, and so we speak that upon you, and again, um, oh, wow, this, this is the blessing, that we have the authority, and, you know, it's a joy. It's exactly that. We're expecting good reports. We're expecting good reports. We prayed for healings for, for some people with a fever. Um, uh, sadly, in Ukraine, there's stuff happening over there. They're, they try to attack the family by, with the children or whatever to get at the parents. We speak against that. In Psalm 91, no evil shall be false, neither shall any plague come our dwelling. And he says, you'll give his angels charge over us to keep us in all your ways. Yeah. So keep us, yeah. Lord, keep us here in North America, keep us in Ukraine. We speak, uh, you know, the, the mess that's going over there. We speak against the darkness in that land and repentance come to that people, but also in Taiwan and Nepal and even China, like China, they're rattling their, you know, they are trying to 
make themselves a big name, but Father, conviction come upon those people too. A great revival, I speak on them and to us too. Um, you know, it's, it's, which is harder to convict the person that can see their sin or the person says, I'm not a sinner, I'm okay. Those are the harder ones in North America. We think we're okay. We, we've been saturated with the word, but we still, we still need that conviction of the Holy Spirit that, you know, sin, the devil, the whole nine yards, let's speak against that in Jesus' name. Um, brother, do you want to wrap up here? Wow. Just, just people need to start looking within, in Christ, in him. In if you him. did a word study on those verses, like in Christ Jesus, in the Lord Jesus, in him, I can do all things, in Christ Jesus, all these in him. In him. In him. That, Amen. People too busy looking at sin conscious, being sin conscious, instead of looking within of the greater one that's in them. You know, um, and, and we need to realize, and I know a lot of people, sometimes they, their prayers uh, sometimes are ineffective. We don't pray according to the word of God. Lots of times our prayers can be ineffective. We can ask me, for example, we can be begging God for healing, begging him, saying, God, please heal me. When he says, by his stripes, you were healed. Past okay. tense. Matthew 8, 17. He took, past tense, all your infirmities. He bore, past tense, all your sicknesses. You know, when, when all you need to do is make a demand of what he's already provided. You, 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 you're you not demanding God. You're just demanding that healing to come into your body. So, I mean, people don't realize that. And then again, we have people's prayers that are praying for countries in this, uh, you know, and things going on around the world. Say, so, well, the Bible says that that wars and rumors of war. Yeah, but you're you're still here. And yeah. why do you have the Holy Spirit for what? To have goosebumps in church on Sundays? <laughs> no, you're supposed to exercise your authority, his kingdom. You're supposed to bring his kingdom done here now, not in the king, not in the thousand year generation, no, but no. in this kingdom done now on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Your kingdom, his Amen. will to be done. And that's the and that's in first John 3 8. For this purpose, Jesus was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's mm -hmm. what we're supposed to be continually doing. That's what Jesus did when he was here. We're, we're, we are to carry that on until we get zapped up. And that's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 7. In mm -hmm. 2 Thessalonians 7, said, when he that, he that holds back, and he's talking, you know, not, not in a defensive way, in the overcoming the, the, the Antichrist and, and preventing him from being revealed, yeah. is the believer with the power of the Holy Ghost. And when the Holy Ghost is taken up, then we're not here. There's no power to hold it back, and all hell will break loose. So, I mean, I know a lot of Christians say, well, well, what, what, what about the tribulation? Who cares about the tribulation? Start caring about people's souls, you no. know, going, you know no. that are going to go to hell. You know, yep. start talking about the Word of God, you know, uh, about getting people saved, you know. talk, Start talking about the authority of the believer, you know, the the healing that's already been done, all the the the, the, the promises of God that are yes and amen now, not in the kingdom to come, but now. And what's you know? the talent we have? You know, like the, the one, 10 talent or five talents right. and two talents. You know, the talent is, it's, we, it's the, the example is monetary, but it's still the, the principles there that God has given us this authority. Yeah. What have you done? Buried it? What right. is that? You know, under a bushel, the light hunter in the bushel. No, take that authority that you have. You speak against these things in Jesus' name. Um, when I was in the military, I was a system-based war officer. And so what I did is that when the, he was, he was basically the, the command, the base commander, and this is the guy underneath him, the, the two I see, I was his assistant. And so when he said something, I carried it out. And right. when I went forth and I says, well, you know, they say, well, who are you? I say, I'm the ABWO system based war. And they said, oh, okay, we better do it. And so we're doing it in the, it's funny how life skills come through, but that's exactly <laughs> what happened. Yeah. In myself, I was a nobody, but when I said in the name of the base commander type thing or the base war officer who else right. is assistant things got done because they didn't want to get in trouble well that's the same thing in the name of jesus we are using that as authority in jesus so take that to heart and this is what you're missing is you're missing that holy spirit that revelation to come forth you know it's nice again this is all hidden knowledge but it has to be in here to speak this stuff out because out of the abundance of your heart your mouth speaks amen so, that's you're talking about the centurion you know in matthew chapter eight he, believed, he recognized the authority in no, Jesus' no. words. He said, Lord, speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. You don't have to come to my house. Uh, in fact, in one other instance, he says, I'm not worthy that you come to my house. So he says, speak the word only, and Jesus marveled at his faith. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. 
Exactly. Amen. Let's speak the word in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. But you got to know the word and yep. you got to know your authority. And it is a walk. I mean, yeah, it, it says it's a daily walk. I just have to, that's the only way I can explain it. I mean, it'd be nice. We do have the fullness of Christ in us. We do have Amen. the God. Amen. We do have the Holy Spirit in us, but it's this extra step that a lot of christians are missing and that the devil has us to see well yeah you got god in you you don't need any. no it's a daily I, walk it's like a it's like a muscle you know faith is muscle you know don't you sure believe for the nations and that's what i'm i'm stretching myself to but start with your block yeah that's what i do every night I, our neighborhood then i start with the city and then we uh, go you know uh, where you feel that god has i mean be nice it's just, that's the reality. Some of us have little faith, have great faith. It doesn't matter. The big thing is, is do you trust the, in the Father that He hears you? And exactly that. What is His will? That all be saved, you know. And His will is to, to uh, what, what sort of um, uh, destroy the works of the devil, because that's what the devil comes to kill, Man. destroy. And Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and redeem us, and He has. So we are now responsible. You, Absolutely. You, Think of God's faith in us. He, Jesus, when he was on earth, his final, I mean, obviously to, to redeem us, right? But he left the care of this message Absolutely. with a ragtag bunch of guys that half of them didn't believe in him because they, they were never around, right? I mean, John was probably the only one that really pulled the punches and he was everywhere with Jesus. And do you notice, by the way, he's the one that lived the longest. But anyways, you know, and God, you know, the faith that she, if I can say it in a human speak, where Jesus had to have faith that he knew that this 12 plus the 70 plus how many more out there would spread the word. Man alive, you know, but would I have picked a fisherman, a lawyer, a tax collector? Probably not. I would, yeah, maybe the lawyer because he knows how to talk. But a doctor, sure, I'll pick. But, you know, like a fisherman, you know, God uses anybody and yeah. God will use you. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That gives that, me hope because I always, I always was, you know, one day I'll share my testimony, but I was browbeaten. I thought I was stupid and all that. And yet here I am. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the grace of God. You, you know, what caused you to think that way was words, you know, words, you know, words, yeah. and, and, and if you'd have been taught this word, you know, yep. it would have changed the way of thinking about yourself, you know, and it does transform a person's mind. The way that, in your mind. Yep. Right. So, I mean, Negative words are, are effective too. You know, they they affect a person's right. life. They affect our, our people don't realize death and life is the power of tongue. Blessing and cursing is also tongue. Uh, and, and we impact everything around us, our environment, our families, everything, our finances, everything by words. You know, in Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus says, "Who?" Mark, in Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus said, "Whosoever." That means it didn't mean to say just believer. Whosoever. Believer and unbeliever alike shall mm -hmm. speak to the mountain and, and shall not doubt in his heart. That's a key part of that verse. But shall believe in his heart. Another key part, those things which he says, he shall have whatsoever he says. He mm -hmm. didn't say you're just going to have the positive. You're going to have whatsoever. If you if you speak to it, you speak to that circumstance or that mountain or your, your finances or whatever. If you speak to it, whatever you believe in your heart and don't doubt in your heart, you're mm -hmm. going to have. See, a lot of people take that. This that's the word of faith. Uh, one of the word of faith. Uh, what do you want to call it? One of their main statements. But you know, which is my one of my favorite verses, Mark eleven twenty three. Yeah. But 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 people don't realize that the key part of that verse is be believing in your heart and not doubting your heart. Some people say, "Oh, I, I." Somebody cracks a joke and somebody says, "Oh, I said I'm gonna. Die. I almost died laughing." You, oh no. Am I going to die now? No, you're not, because you're not, you don't believe that, do you? You don't believe that, that's right. That's ridiculous. So this is the pendulum, we've gone too far that's, the other way. That's where the word of faith has gone off and got weird, you know? Yeah, yeah. But if it's the word of faith, like it says in, in Romans 10, 8, you know, we do preach and teach the word of faith, which we preach, and I've seen it work. You know, I can give you testimony how the words and prayers changed my neighborhood, you know, from a gang-infested neighborhood to to uh, in, in, the, in the two schools that are around here, middle school and high school, to to the worst in the county, to the top in the county. And it, in one time, by words, by faith, by binding, taking authority over the principalities, the devils that were manipulating uh, teachers and, and, and politicians and everything. And I just kept speaking the word. One year's time, it changed from the worst to the top of the, of the 
the, that's the, the promise we have. That's the promise. You can we have. change the neighborhood through words. Amen. Amen. Words of faith. I want to share this in closing. Deuteronomy thirty nineteen. I call heaven and earth uh, this uh, to accord against you. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life and that you Amen. may in your seed may live. So we leave this with you that you folks, you choose life. And how you do that, you speak Amen. the life. You speak the word. So choose life. Choose Jesus in your heart. And he will come and make a home in you. And like I say, realize it is a fight because Satan, um, Satan obviously doesn't want to give up territory. But he's not omnipresent you know we always think god and satan satan is a created being he's limited father god is the one that's in charge and so but he's limited himself and this is love this is this is the weird not the weird but the wonderful thing about this his love is limited he's limited himself to your heart your choice because otherwise we'd just be robots right you know bam you're done but we choose this day life so i pray for you that listening i choose this day life for you and uh and exactly what brother albert mentioned pray for you start praying for your neighbor pray for your home pray for your family acts uh, was it 2019 or you know sorry um that you know believe in the lord jesus and you shall be saved and your household and so we're praying that like even for my father-in-law here but um start with your neighborhood you know the folks in ukraine start believing for their neighborhood the protection then work outwards you know and you'll see and these little steps encourage me it'd be nice and yeah and no doubt there are people of faith will just speak to the 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 principality of the nation and things will change me i i I find that this is a thing i've learned start small and work outwards and then you can see how I used to believe for my block. Now I'm starting to believe for the city. Now, you know, eventually it'll be for the country and such, but that's just it. This little step, take that step and choose life. I choose life for my neighbors. I choose life for our cities. I choose life for our nation. And, and uh, I just choose life. And that is the freedom we have because from that we, and it's one thing to believe, but now we can share it with somebody else. And that to me is the real word. We can share this word with others is because that's the hope we have is the word because it's it's you know that these get rich programs all that that's cool but no this is get life we Amen. want life so start start with yourself at home start with the the family start with your home your physical house i mean i walk around the corners of the house just like they did in old testament and it's not the the walls of jericho but i walk and i mark and i say this is god's place so psalm 91 no evil come nigh my dwelling you know and then i'm going to start i walk around the neighborhood and eventually you know maybe you have to walk across the nation but you know what i'm trying to say is that that's where our faith is and if you can't do it which is not the problem here you saw today brother albert and i we're agreeing together and one put a thousand two that's how we can cover the distance between us and then there's other believers in between that's how god works is we're all these um I, I think like a, a nuclear rod, you know, we're talking about when we're pulled away, you know, uh, they, they put these nuclear rods into the, into the water, whatever, uh, to keep the nuclear, the temperature, I forget what they're called, but sorry, I'm not that technical. Um, but as they pull the rods out of the water, the water heats up from the radiation, and that's where you get steam, and that's where the electricity is generated, and then they put the rods back down to cool it down. But if there's a problem, which happens in some place like Chernobyl, you have basically a meltdown, if the rods don't go back in, it's overheating so we are the christians we're these rods that keep things together through the lord working through the earth yeah and if we don't speak these things that rod is not working properly and that's why there's turmoil there's all that stuff happening around you so we're we're the tom we're the salt there's salt there's another one yeah we're the light of the world amen we're the salt and the light of that's right and light always overtakes darkness. Yeah, we're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the word. And where do we get this power source? How do we plug in? By the Holy Spirit. Talk. The Father, the Word, and the Son. The, well, the Father, Son, and the Word. They are one. And they will always talk about each other. They will Amen. not contradict each other. And that's in John there. I know some Bibles leave that verse out. But that's that's the Word, the Spirit, and the life. You know, this is it. So get to know your father better and you'd be surprised it's not a religion it's a lifestyle it's a peace in your heart amen Amen. Amen. well we went a little bit over here uh (laughs) yeah brother walter is not paying us overtime on this one uh (laughs) wow last time i'd say oh yeah we got a couple minutes and then look at this so that's the joy of the lord if you focus and i feel folks thank you for listening in too but um do you want to wrap up with a prayer for the people and we'll just we'll sign off here amen (laughs) 
Thank you all for joining us. God bless you. Uh, grow in the knowledge of God. Let the Amen. word of God dwell in you richly, like it says in Colossians. Let it live in you, dwell in you. Don't not be a doer of that word, not just a hero only. So, Father, I pray that Christ be formed according to what is it, Galatians 5, 519. <laughs> that Christ be formed in every believer. And that means that Christ, the, the, his, his character, his nature, his, his, uh, his divine nature that we have in us, First Peter, Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4, I think, is that divine nature grow and that Christ be, uh, grow, that they be conformed to the image of Christ, everyone watching, believing, mm -hmm. through the knowledge of God, through the word of God, by the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, Amen. Next. And a word from our sponsor, Brother Walter, remind <laughs> me. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's such a blessing to, to do this. You know, I'm joking, but uh, uh, join us tomorrow uh, for a bilingual service with uh, Brother Walter and Tony Abram. I believe it's a Spanish version. So, como uh, esta? Biano. That's about all I know about Spanish. So, <laughs> God, I'm glad God speaks King James English because I would be in trouble. <laughs> But yes, come join us tomorrow. Brother Walter will be back to regular programming and probably a little bit more normalcy with the, with the type of uh, recordings. But thank you again, Brother Walter. It's a pleasure to finally meet you semi in person, but uh, I do appreciate you and what you've done. Amen. And we plus your little group there. It's it's not the numbers. It's the, the no, it's was the it the quality, not the quantity. It's the power that manifests. The power. And Amen. so, yes, power. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Power of the Holy Ghost. Lord bless you. And uh Hopefully we'll see you again. I'm going to sign off God, here. God bless you, Tom. God bless you too. Um, do I do this right? Let's see. I did this right here. Uh, recording. Where's recording? Oh, right up here. Uh, stop recording.